Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's Golden Wind Geek Out. I'm your host, Danny. Got my cohort, Ryan, with me. Hello. And we're here to talk about episode 15, The Thankful or Grateful Dead, part one. The train. The train. Oh, <laughs> Danny here with another post-recording interruption for you guys. So... Apparently, this has been making the rounds on the internet, and I did not even, you know, really hear about this until after we had done recording, so I figured I might as well mention this now. We have confirmation that a second opening is on its way. We don't know when, but we know it's coming. So, apparently, it's been listed on, like, the official website, and the, uh, we have, we all, like, here's what we know going in for this new opening. The title, I'm not even going to begin trying to pronounce it in Japanese, but it's loosely translated to Requiem for a Traitor. So that's going to be, you know, interesting. It's going to be performed by the same guy that sang Great Days, which was the last opening from Diamond is Unbreakable, and quite frankly, my favorite opening from Diamond is Unbreakable. Um, the song is going to be composed by, you know, the guy who usually does the music, you know, for the series, you know, uh, Yugo Kano. The lyrics are written by the same guy who wrote the lyrics for the first opening, Sonochino Sadame. That's gonna be interesting. Now, the, uh, according to the website that I'm actually, like, the article that I'm reading, the new opening theme will feature an English version, and the single is expected to go on sale in Japan March 27th. So, that basically means we've Probably, we've got, at this point, we've got roughly two months of fighting gold left. So after this train fight, this leaves us with two more fights before we get to uh, the rough, roughly the halfway point. Which, for those of you who have read the manga, you all know what happens at that point. This is the turning point for the series that, you know, every arc has where the story completely shifts in a different direction. It's going to get darker. And that's going to be coming up. So I am thinking that that is when we are going to be seeing this new intro. So we still got some we still got some moments of finding gold left over. But, you know, in the coming weeks, let's be on the lookout and listen specifically for what, you know, JoJo tradition, the last episode that we get of an intro, they start adding the sound effects. So as soon as we hear sound effects coming in for fighting gold, that's when we know that we're getting the next opening. Alrighty. And, yep, this is another beat for beat episode, but, oh my god, <laughs> they are, David Production is doing this fight justice. I mean, holy shit. It's like, yeah, like, okay, let's just geek out about the first half of this episode, which is just pretty much missed as that part in the fight. That's right. Yeah, so it's like, you know... I think, like, um, like, right away, I know when we were initially watching this, this is just, I guess, like, my own blindness or stupidity or whatever, but I had completely forgotten that in the manga, that Mista actually shoots off one of Pesci's fingers, so when that happened, it was like, whoa, 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 I don't remember this, like, at first I, I was thinking, you know, oh, wait, is this new, was this something that David Production added to just like you know make mr more badass but i double checked it later on afterwards and nope that did happen in the manga cannot believe i forgot about that oh, tr oh trust me it's like it, see it okay it's, okay i have not read the tr like i haven't like looked at like the trade file like nearly as much as you have in regards to the manga so it's like no, so like no. As a po so aside from like a Pesci's finger getting like blown off from Mrs. Pistols, no, trust me, there was like a bunch of other shit that I completely forgot to happen like during this first uh, train fight sequence. Uh, like, like um, I I think I think the one thing that I think the biggest thing that threw me off was like um, what was it? I think um. First, first Pesci runs into this um, supposed random passenger who is also, um, you know, um, a, a supposed victim of um, Grateful Dead's uh, stand ability, and he's like really old. And I guess um, at one point, you know, that same uh, supposed uh, Grateful Dead victim like grabs hold of Mista, and at that point, 
that's when uh, it, it tur no, it's like a <laughs> tur turns out it wasn't just some actual like a Grateful Dead victim. It was a it was actually prosciutto, like literally absorbing I sub the life energy out of Mista, like unbeknownst to him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh man, that was that was crazy. That was crazy. I mean, it was crazy enough to see in the uh, manga too. Because, like, now bear in mind, in the manga, this was the point where you actually saw Prosciutto for who he was. Because in the first, you know, part of this fight, Prosciutto was always kept in the shadows. You saw Pesci clearly, but they kept Prosciutto a secret. It was not until this point was when we f actually, like, got a good, good view of, like, oh, okay, he's been revealed now. So that's where it's like, you know... It was crazy in the manga, and it's like, you know, it's one of those things, like, you know, you would think, like, you know, oh, because they would kept, um, because they kept Prosciutto in the shadows, that, you know, but now that we, but, you know, we've now seen all of La Squadra, so it's like, oh, okay, maybe it doesn't have the same feel, but, I don't know, I thought they still handled it pretty well. I mean, it was like, it was oh, still yeah. just as, still just as amazing to see Prosciutto pull that off. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no, no. I I agree. It's like the way that they were productions handle like the reveal of Prosciutto during that scene. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was very well done indeed. I agree. Mhm. Mm yeah, and then we get that conversation that he has with uh, Pesci, where you know he's saying, you know, yeah, he calls him, you know, Mamoni, you know, you're a mama's boy, and he's telling them, you know, it's time to man the fuck up and everything. That's where it's like, I know in the manga. Prosciutto, you know, he was, like, you know, cradling his head and everything, like, you know, like a child. But, I don't, I, God, I was getting, like, shivers up my spine watching it being animated, because, like, it's not that he's just, like, cradling Pesci's head, he's, like, caressing it like a lover. And it's like, oh, God, come on, David Production. <laughs> I mean, I know, the, I, kn I know the day is high in this part, and we are fine with that, but God damn, that was like kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 like okay, all right, guys, keep your distance. All right, keep your distance. Look, look, look. I understand there's a thing called brotherly love out there, but it's like okay, come on, let, let let's simmer down. All right. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like ah, oh, damn it, man. It, like it, it, it was creepy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know about you, man, but that 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 was creepy and you know and i mean we get it and it, we get it not once but twice you know because we get it the first time you know before prosciutto shoots mister in the head three times and then when they're like what is it they're in the front of the train like you know where the uh conductor usually is yeah yeah he does it he does it again and it's like both times it was like ah prosciutto <laughs> Pesci, you're a mama's boy. You're a whip. Grow the fuck up in front of the train. Pesci, forget what, what I yelled at you about. I believe in you. You're confident. I love you. I <laughs> know. <laughs> it's like, God okay, damn okay. it, man. Make up, your, make up your mind, man. <laughs> okay, he doesn't really say that, but it's like, he might as well. No, no, I mean, no, I mean that's more or less what it was. Like, you know, the first time around, he was telling them, yeah, it's time to nut up. But then second time around, you know... Because by this point, you know, Pesci was saying, you know, look, my instincts aren't as good as yours. You know, just don't rely on me. And, you know, that's where, you know, Prosciutto's like, oh, no, 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 you're very reliable. You know, you have to believe in your ability. I believe in your ability. Your and stand is unbeatable if you put your mind to it. Exactly. So it's like, you know, first he beat him down, then he gave him the pep talk. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, it's like, oh... And it's, like, and it's like, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, Pesci remembers, like, uh, uh, from the very beginning, he, he, his initial intent was to look under, like, like the driver's seat or whatnot. But first he, but first he was like, oh, well, I looked under the seat, but, uh, I guess I was just imagining things. See, my intuition isn't all that great. And then Pusho was like, oh, no, Pesci, you're a genius. Look at this turtle shit. <laughs> okay, he doesn't really say that it's turtle chef. It's like, look at that animal shit. It is fresh. It is new. They are somewhere in this train. Yeah. 
Let alone, like, man, I can only imagine, like, uh, the anime-only watchers that are watching this now. That You're probably freaking out, like, oh my god, about Mista. Because it's like, I mean, yeah, they're doing, like, you know, usually what happens, you know, how, you know, whenever a character dies in JoJo, like, you see, like, they're, like, you see, like, their spirit particles or shit, like, leaving their body, and it's like, you see the same thing happening to Mista. It's like, I just, I just remembered, even when I first showed you the manga to that, Ryan, you were flipping out. You were like, no, no, he's not dead. Don't you dare tell me he's dead. No. Like, you were <laughs> I- flipping out. <laughs> I actually remember that when you brought that up, but it, it's it's so crazy too because it's like considering how David Productions handled the whole ordeal with um, Mista supposedly dying or whatnot, and yeah, they gave like that effect where like their spirit particles are leaving their body or whatever. I kid you not. My feelings are if okay if it was just me like you know watching the anime for the first time, but not but having like no knowledge of reading the manga prior. My feelings of that probably would have been much, much stronger, if only because it's like, okay, I have seen this shit happen once too many times during Stardust Crusaders, and it's like, oh, <laughs> heaven forbid, it's like, heaven forbid they were giving Mista the exact same treatment this early during the anime adaptation, or part five in general. Right. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, and it was one of those things where it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, like, even when I was first reading the manga, I was like, well, what the fuck? Because, I mean, yeah, it wasn't even like, you know, you know, Prosciutto could easily have just been like, you know, yeah, I use Grateful Dead on him and just leave him there to rot and just walk away and be like, you know, okay, there's a, okay, there's still a chance that he'd walk away just because, you know, yeah, that's what you say, he just used to stand and walked off. But no, Prosciutto had to take it a step further and shoot Mist in the head three times with his own gun. <laughs> so it's yeah, like, God, uh... it's like, God damn, it's like, Oh, god damn. It's like, again, like, a l- this is why Pesci, not Pesci, this is why Prosciutto is a fan favorite. It's like, it's not just because he looks damn fine in the suit, and it's not just because he's got a killer freaking stand, but it's moments like that, where it's just like, you know, yeah, the guy is an assassin, and he's very thorough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he really is, actually. Oh, can I, can I also just point out on how it's like, I feel so good. Gu- okay, I know that this is the point for bullet number five, but it's like, I feel so s- sad for bullet number five. Oh, Cause- yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that moment where it's like, yeah, you see, he's like, he just like crawls out of Mr.'s hat with the ice cube and he's crying. It was like. Oh, I want to give it a hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like we, yeah, it's like we cut back to Mista, you know, a second time, you know, after we initially got the shot of Mista's uh, spirit supposedly leaving his body or whatever. And it's like, I guess uh, I can only imagine they were like um, bloody ice cubes just popped out of like the three hole bullet holes that uh, Prosciutto gave Mista the first time around. I, I guess that was in his head. I don't know. But even then, it's like, yeah, we see, yeah, we see bullet number five holding out like a fresh ice cube in hand and he is just crying his eyes up be like Vista get up you gotta get up and it's like oh my god this adorable little goddamn bullet mmm I know. It's it's like, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like I it's like seriously. We we knew this was happening. We knew this was going to happen. But it's like, god damn it! You can still get a little bit of the feels just with how David Productions handled this particular scene. Right. I mean, it's like yeah. I mean, like I mean, it's like yeah. Like if we didn't know already that Mister was gonna walk out of this thing alive, it'd be like. Yeah, you're re- you you really think that yeah, Mist is going down here, but Prosciutto only fired three bullets. If he had the sense to shoot a fourth one, then Mist would probably be fucked. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> so that's where it's like, nope, nope, there's no number four involved. Mist is okay. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm trying to think, is there anything else as far as Mista's, uh, fights, uh, that, uh, that we can geek out about? Um, 
Well, uh, I'll, well, well, I mean, I guess the only other thing I could possibly think of is, like, how they managed to, like, animate, like, the whole, like, okay, like, going first, like, f like, way back into the episode, like, near, like, back to near the beginning, I, I would like to point out just how gruesome they made the scene look, you know, when it's, like, um, we're, like, Mr. Still in the middle of getting, like, being pulled in by, um, a beach boy, and it's, like, the more Pesci, like, reels in the hook or whatever, the hook, like, goes deeper and deeper into Mr.'s body. Yeah. To the, to the point where, to the point where it's, like, okay, I am getting some serious Stardust Crusaders flashback. It's, like, I don't, it's, like, I don't recall Beach Boy, like, being able to use, like, a little Dio's flesh buds as bait. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, it's like seriously. The fact that the, that goddamn hook and the line or whatever just goes deeper and deeper into Mister's body to the point where it's like, wait a minute. It's like, oh god, if this goes any further into my body, it's gonna go straight to my brain. And it's like, holy shit, this is literally a makeshift Dio freaking blood cell or whatever that thing is. I I forgot what it was called. The, but, uh, but you, they are a flesh, flesh bud. Blood, thank you. <laughs> the name literally. But, but you get what I mean, right? It's like, holy shit, they, they are literally going there. I did not think of it that way, even when we read the, that very part of the manga. But it's like, okay, this, yeah, this is really just turning out to be a makeshift deal, Flesh Bud. Yeah, well, to be fair, uh, you know, Part 5 has a lot of moments that, you know, make me think back to Stardust Crusaders. But, like, you know, they either took a different, tur a different turn with it, or they just refined it or something. I mean, that's like, hell... We're going to actually be seeing this in the next episode, but, like, uh, yeah, like, um, the, during Jotaro and Dio's fight, where, you know, Jotaro had to play dead in order to, like, not only throw off Dio, but to even, like, you know, divert the attention away from him going after Polnareff, you see something very similar to that happen, you know, in this fight, and we're going to be seeing that next week. So, I mean, it's like, you know, there's a fair amount of moments that are going to be like that. Like, you'll be watching this, you'll be like, oh! This reminds me of, you know, blah, blah, blah from Stardust Crusaders. I mean, it's like, we've already seen shit like that. It's like, you know, yeah, like, if you remember in Stardust Crusaders when they were going up against, uh, what was it, the, uh, the Hanged Man, where, you know, it was all about, you know, guys, you know, attacking by, off of, like, reflective surfaces. And, you know, Kakyoin made a whole point, like, you know, it's just reflective surfaces. There's no such thing as the mirror world. Then comes Aluso in 2001. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, I guess with that said, uh, we can now talk about um, pretty much the beginning of the second part of this fight. And, yep, this is, this is, this is what made me a Bruno girl. Oh, here we go! <laughs> Yes, who? <laughs> great bitch! Yes. Greatest intro! <laughs> Damn, I forgot how grateful, how fast Grateful Dead is. I mean, you know, speed is like one of like the defining factors for sticky fingers. So for him to block all those punches. Yeah, really. Oh! Ow! <laughs> oh! Oh, God, I felt that one. <laughs> God. <laughs> yes! Yep. Yes! I love that dodge! Oh. Ow! He's <laughs> like, okay, God! I know this is rich coming from me, but your powers are bullshit! <laughs> 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 yes! Yes! 
See ya! Oh! God damn it! God damn it! Really? No! At that point? Seriously? Oh, god damn it. God, just when this fight's getting good! Oh my god! It's like, we only got to see, like, the first, like, what? Five minutes of this fight. But, oh god, it was like, oh, why did you have to stop? Five minutes <laughs> in, why did you have to stop? Stop! It's Things so were just good. getting so good, and you had to stop it at the worst cliffhanger possible. What the oh, hell, like, David Productions? Oh, it's not even just that. It's like you know, you get to the whole bit where you know Pesci's noticing that. Wait a minute, there's somebody missing. It's like, wait a minute, it's Bucciolati. Bucciolati is missing, and it's like, and you know, it's like I had the exact same reaction when I was reading this in the manga too. It was like. Yeah, wait, who, wait, somebody's missing? Wait, who's missing? And then he mentions, then he says, you know, oh, it's Bucciolati. And it was like, wait, what? And that's when you see Harry is slinking out from the fucking ceiling. It was like, oh, so oh, oh. it's like, oh, that was awesome. I a boo. <laughs> yeah, well, let alone, I loved the, I, I loved what they did with it. Because like, again, in the manga, like you didn't really get this view. All you saw was like, you know, you just see that, you know, oh, Bruno's hanging from the ceiling. But I like what David Production did where it's like, you actually see like, even with the background and stuff. So it's like, okay, you see he's in like the zipper void or whatever. But then all of a sudden you'll see like, you know, you'll see like the silhouette of the zipper. And like, you actually see it's opening up. So it's like, okay, you see him coming out of hiding, but you're actually getting it from the perspective of actually being in there with Bruno. I really liked that. Oh yeah, that was that was actually a really nice attention to detail right there. Yeah. Yeah, so that's like, you know, so it's like that, that, that intro was awesome. So then we get where, um, so then you see like a little bit of a uh, prosciutto actually taking them on. And it's one of those things like even I forgot, like, you know, I, I don't even know so much as forgot so much as like, you know, because now we're seeing this being animated. I guess it makes you really appreciate just how fast Grateful Dead is. Because, I mean, Sticky Fingers is like, you know, Sticky Fingers is speed and power. So the fact that Grateful Dead could actually hold off Sticky Fingers with one arm it really makes you appreciate just how fast Grateful Dead is. I mean, Sticky Fingers is going pretty goddamn fast, even with Bruno aging. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, really. Yeah, so that's where it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, I, just, I thought that was pretty cool to actually see that being animated. Then we get, like, that freaking amazing moment where he, like, where, like, yeah, like, Bruno, like, acrobats his way off the ceiling and kicks prosciutto into the goddamn wall. It was like, <laughs> oh, it was like, oh, I felt that one. <laughs> Windows shattered upon impact. It's like, oh, damn. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. I felt that. I heard that. I even tasted that. What the, <laughs> what the hell? Also, oh, ow. Okay. Yep. And then it's like, you know, of course, we get to where, you know, the episode ends and oh my god, the cliffhanger where it ends. Where it's like, you know, like you see like, you know, okay, you see all these like cool moments where, you know, yeah, br where Prosciutto and Bruno are exchanging punches. You get that really kick-ass moment where like, yeah, Bruno unzips his own head to dodge a punch. That was great. It but was. then it's like, but then it's like, you know, you get to where you see, um, you know, uh, Prosciutto goes on about how, you know, well, yeah, well, the more you're fighting, you know, the the warmer your body is getting. And when that happens, you're just going to age even faster. So what's Bruno's solution? I'm throwing your ass off this fucking train. And that's where it decides to end. It's like, no! <laughs> just, it's like, Things are just getting started. And I just know. had to stop it right there. What the oh, hell? It's just getting good, too. It's like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no, but seriously, I was like, my God, that 
What a great way to end an episode. Like, holy shit, that, that was great. <laughs> Oh my god, that's like, oh, it's like, I, I know I said this before, but it's like, David Production Man, you have been doing this fight justice. It's like, oh my god, I, I'm loving it. I'm fucking loving it. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, here's hoping that David Production actually keeps up with giving this fight justice upon the next episode. Oh, but, I'm, but sure how, it, how, how, yeah, I'm sure how, it will. Yeah, I was about to say is like considering how David Productions has been handling all the fights thus far, is like something tells me that's not gonna be an issue for them. I'm just saying. Yeah, so I'm thinking, considering where we are in this fight, it looks like the you know, I'm thinking like, yeah, the remainder of this fight is going to be you know, the entirety of the next episode. So it's like, you know, we yeah. got all of it we got all of this episode, all of next week. And, like, the beginning of last week. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, roughly two and a half episodes to take care of this fight. Which, you know, that's kind of, I, I was thinking three episodes. But two and a half, that'll work too. You know, because, I mean, yeah, this is a long fight. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like uh, for the most part, yeah, I was initially thinking it would just be about, like, this particular length, actually. Yet, where, yeah, it takes, like, about, like, at least two and a half episodes. But, yeah, I, the other half of me was thinking it would be a much, like, like at least, like, three whole episodes of, like, this whole trade fight. If only because of how long it took for us to go through the entirety of the train fight up, up, upon reading the uh, original manga. Yeah. Yeah, alrighty, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, pretty much, like, next week, it's gonna be, yeah, Bruno Bruno versus Prosciutto, gotta get rid of him, and then it's gonna be one-on-one -on -one with Bruno versus Pesci, and that's when Pesci's gonna fucking step up. Although, it's like, um, okay, I guess, uh, I guess we'll do a spoiler tag here for the anime-only watchers. It's like, oh, um, okay. there's one thing I'm real curious about. Now, to be fair, David Production has, you know, we've been doing very well as far as censorship goes. And I know a couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody brought it to our attention in the comments that, you know, probably because Vento Oreo is airing at a later time in Japan, that that's why they're able to get away with a lot of, like, the more gorier aspects so that's why we haven't seen a lot of, like, the black bar censorships or anything like we've been seeing in the previous parts. So that being said, uh, Ryan, you remember what happens to Prosciutto at the end of this fight? Uh, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, let me think. It's like, did it, like, uh, okay, okay, I, okay, I, I'm, do, use, I'm using whatever vague memory that I have right now. It's like, didn't Bruno figure out a way to use his zippers and, like, uh, use his zipper ability to pretty much have prosciutto you know get his entire body all like fucked up and like the gears of the train or some shit like that yeah he like threw prosciutto into the fucking train so it's like you know so it takes him out so you're thinking okay he died like right then and there but then you find out right when bruno's you know about to start fighting pesci all of a sudden, the aging starts kicking in again. And Bruno's like, what the hell? I thought I got rid of him. And then it's like, yeah. We get the close-up panel, and we see that, like, yeah. Prosciutto, still alive. His body is just so horribly mangled in the train wheels. Like, caught in the gears and everything. I mean, he's just fucking mangled. Like, you know, he's, like, legs twisted. His arms, like, probably off or something. I mean, it's like... He is, like, just horribly mangled. He's not getting out of this fight alive. But he's using the last of his strength to try to help Pesci out. It was so gory in the manga. Like, that's probably, like, one of, like, the most gory scenes in the manga. It's just seeing what happened to Prosciutto. It was just like, oh, God, that was such a punch in the gut. I'm real curious. Even though David Production is, you know, they're all able to get show off a lot more of the gore and everything... It's just, how gory are they going to make this in the anime? Like, are they are they still going to try and tone it down? Or are they going to be, like, as graphic as possible? Graphic as possible. Graphic as possible. I I'm honestly hoping graphic as possible. Just because, I mean, that just, like, it really does just kind of go to show that it's like, 
even even being in the state that he's in, and like the guy's probably got like what minutes of life left in him, prosciutto is still fighting. And it's like, it really shows just like, you know, it shows the resolve and determination that Prosciutto has. And it's like, really like, you know, just the whole idea of resolve. Granted, that's always, that's a big theme in these fights in part five, you know, as a whole. But specifically in this fight, you know, resolve is a, plays a huge fucking factor here. It's like, you especially see this with uh, Bruno versus Pesci. So I'm really hoping that they will keep that as graphic as possible to also really highlight that for a prosciutto as well. Yeah, yeah, as I see yourself, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's like one of like the biggest highlights, you know, within this entire part. Uh, I mean, amongst other things that have occurred throughout this entire fight, but it's like that's like that's that's yeah, that's like one of the biggest, most goriest highlights in the entire fight so it's like if they had to like tone it down in any way shape or form it's like i'm sorry it's like it would kind of lose its you know it was kind of lose it for me if you know what i mean it won't have right. that same feeling or whatnot because like because like i see because like we've already been seeing like a bunch of gory shit going on like earlier during this uh uh this anime or whatever or the yeah it's like or whatever but it's like I I mean it's like even yeah you it's like you've heard me I would be like losing my shit because of how well different productions has been handling a lot of these gory parts or whatever it's like I don't know if they for some whatever reason decide to tone it down with that particular scene I do not know if, if I'll have that same feeling for that or not yeah yeah so that's where it's like I'm hoping on that one and now and now this is just me being the pathetic Bruno fangirl that I am. I am also especially looking forward to next week because next week, you know, for when Bruno finishes off Pesci, this is it's got that's the first time we actually hear Bruno's uh battle cry. That's oh what my god, that, that's right. Yeah, that that's when we first hear that, you know, okay, when he starts using sticky fingers now, he starts going, you know, adi 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 arriva dirty. So it's like, you know, I, oh, I can't wait to hear it. I cannot wait to hear it. You know, just with this voice actor, you know, it's like, this voice actor, I mean, hands down, it's like, yeah, he is Bruno Bucciolati, so I cannot wait to hear him do that stand cry. <laughs> Oh, tr oh, trust me. I may not be as big of a Bucciolati fan compared to Danny here, but it's like, oh no, it's like even when I initially like heard the heard that very catchphrase or whatnot, or like the battle cry and the catchphrase, you know, like in Eyes of Heaven and All Star Battle, I still thought that was like it's a very badass line from Bucciolati. So it's like, yeah, just. Hearing that in the anime, yeah, I am really looking forward to that too. Especially the battle cry, because 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 you know me, I love me some very well done stand battle cries of any variety, like the muda yeah. muda, the arty 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 arty. So it's like hearing so hearing that particular battle cry in the anime, it's like oh uh, yeah, I I am stoked that we're more than likely yeah. gonna be getting that battle cry like near the end of the next episode. Well, yeah, well, because, you know, stand battle cries, you know, up until this point, you know, they've been very basic. Like, you know, it's always been like, you know, ora, 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 you know, you got muda, 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 you know, which we all know is, you know, useless, useless, useless. You know, Josuke is like, you know, his take on the ora, ora, ora is, uh, you know, do da, 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 da. So it's like, you know, and that's just it. It's just either like, you know, for Dio's case, it's just saying useless, useless, useless. And then for, yeah, for Josuke and for Jotaro, it's just a typical punching, you know, punching battle cry. Part 5 really started the whole, you know, okay, we're gonna actually use, like, phrases and shit for the battle cry. And, like, Bruno's the one that really starts that in this fight. Like, you know, technically Jorno because of the whole Muda Muda, which even then is technically Dio. But, you know, yeah, it's like, you know, Bruno, Bruno gets his own battle cry, Narancha's got his own battle cry, but we haven't heard that one yet. You know, uh, it's like, uh, Trish, Trish has her own battle cry, which is fucking amazing, <laughs> but we got a ways to go before we get there. Like, hers is by far the most creative, Right. but it's like, but that's where it's like, you know, 
It's like, yeah, we're gonna start hearing some more battle cries, and you know, yeah, Bruno's Bruno's is gonna Bruno's is will be coming in next week. Right. Yeah, Sasser is just like, ah, oh, man, I I cannot wait. Uh, it's like, me can, too. it's like, it's like, can it be next week, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, um, I know I'm jumping ahead in the story, but um. Can we just skip into next week, please? <laughs> can we? Can we please just skip into next week? No, 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 no. But ser- no, but no, no. But seriously, no. I, I don't want to. I, I do not want to jump straight to that. I want to see the rest of this, the rest of this fight in full. No, nothing cut out. Like no, no <laughs> ifs or buts. I want to see the rest of this fight like in full. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to think. Is there anything else uh, that we that we uh, need to talk about? No, I think we pretty much covered everything we wanted to talk about for this episode. Alrighty then. So hope you guys are enjoying this fight as much as we are. And yep, we will see you next week for part two of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Alright, see you guys then. <laughs> <laughs>